Aujourd'hui, le Parlement. Right now, today, the Parliament is uh, debating and voting a law for energy transition and green growth. What is the energy transition? Why embark on this process and how? This is what I'm going to try and explain in the next few minutes. First of all, what is the energy transition? Well, it's about decreasing the share of fossil energies in our energy supply. Across the world, fossil energies, coal, oil, natural gas, account for more than 80% of our energy supplies. Why the transition? Is, is there going to be a shortage of fossil fuels? Well, unfortunately, no. We know that underground there are large quantities of fossil fuels available. At any rate, there, is, there are too many, the quantity is too large, and therefore the uh, greenhouse effect gases that their combustion would uh, generate would pose a threat. So it's not so much the shortage that is dangerous, but rather the accumulation of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere that poses a threat. In the uh, laissez-faire or no-action scenario, we see that if we do nothing, if we do not implement climatic policies, we can expect the emission of greenhouse effect gases to double between now and 2050. The use of uh, oil and natural gas would become stabilized in the year 2030-2040. Renewable energies, uh, biomass, windmills, etc. would improve. And in some countries, nuclear energy use would also increase. But in this scenario, the source of energy that would uh, progress most would be coal. There are abundant quantities of coal available on Earth at a relatively low price, and we are observing that uh, coal is being used more and more. And if nothing is done, the 21st century or the beginning of the 21st century would be characterized by greater use of, co of coal. Now, when we show this to our climatologist colleagues, they say this is a disastrous scenario because we can expect a high temperature increase, 4 to 5 degrees, by the end of the 21st century versus the situation before the industrial era at the beginning of the 19th century. There is a huge risk of climatic deregulation. This is the likely scenario if we do nothing. The desirable scenario that requires that we implement voluntaristic uh, policies is an entirely different scenario. We would consume less energy, 20 to 25 percent less energy altogether. Our development would be characterized by more renewable energies, biomass, nuclear energy, windmills, less oil, less natural gas, and much less coal than in the laissez-faire scenario. This is the characteristic of the energy transition scenario across the world less energy consumption and a much more balanced mix of energies, less fossil fuels or energies, more renewable energies. It would also be necessary to implement policies uh, to uh, catch and store carbon in order to avoid uh, its release into the atmosphere. So these are the two scenarios, the likely scenarios if we do nothing and the desirable scenario to avoid climatic deregulation. What does it mean for France? In, in France, in 2013, transition trajectories have been studied. These trajectories are trying to achieve factor four, dividing by four the emission of greenhouse effect gases in 2050 compared with 1990. First decision, do we want to embark on this transition towards factor four or do we continue on our pathway and we do nothing about transition? Second decision, Vision. What kind of action do we want to implement? With what intensity regarding energy consumption? And some of the scenarios we have studied require that we reduce our energy consumption in a drastic way, dividing it by two for France at any rate. Other scenarios uh, required a 20% decrease uh, of energy consumption by 2050. Third decision level, what sources of energy will be used in order to meet the uh, demand? On the left-hand side, the scenarios uh, 
gave priority to uh, renewable energies, where some scenarios even encouraged abandoning uh, nuclear energy, placing France on the same pathway that it, Germany is embarking on right now, changing uh, energy sources and abandoning the nuclear energy. But also there is another scenario which really matches the French situation with less energy consumption, but nuclear energy still accounting for about three quarters of uh, electrical energy production. So there are several scenarios, some intermediate, a more or less drastic energy consumption decrease and uh, a new orientation towards less carbonated energy, decarbonated electricity or biogases, biofuels, energy derived from the biomass. We have therefore identified these main trajectories which were discussed during the national debate by all the players and stakeholders, GNOs, representatives, members of parliament, members of the French administration, and the four scenarios were identified as sobriety, low energy consumption and abandoning nuclear energy, efficacy with a stronger decrease of energy consumption and diversification, lower diversification for the third one and the fourth one being the uh, French current model with still a lot of nuclear energy. Those four scenarios served as a basis for a discussion, their possible impacts were discussed, and they supplied a starting point for the uh, energy transition law being discussed right now in France, and which is focusing on the two intermediate options. The two scenarios which are being debated in France are somewhere between the efficacy and diversity scenario, the two middle ones. But the problem is that they suppose that 50% of uh, energy will come from nuclear energy in the two year 2050, and we still have to discuss the role played by uh, nuclear energy in France in the coming years. On the international level, some research projects have um, attempted to develop similar approaches for the countries in the world which release the greatest quantity of uh, greenhouse effect gases, especially considering the negotiation which will take place in Paris during a summit in December. The meeting is called COP21, the conference of the parties which uh, are signatories of the United States, the United Nations Convention. The deep decarbonation project of energy systems based on a network organized by the United Nations brings together teams coming from industrialized countries, countries uh, with a uh, per capita income in excess of $20,000 per year and per inhabitant, and emerging countries. And within the two categories, there are countries uh, which release large quantities of uh, greenhouse effect uh, gases, United States, Canada, Australia, countries with an intermediate uh, release rate, uh, Korea, Japan, United Kingdom and France, and emerging countries uh, with a relatively high emission levels such as Russia, South Africa, China, and countries with slightly lower emission levels. Note that all these countries are interested by decarbonation scenarios, and what it boils down to is that we have to move from a wide dispersion of uh, the main countries uh, regarding their per capita emission levels and try and hit a window which is much smaller for the second half of the 21st century. That window would require convergence of the uh, per capita income or GDP level, and this is happening because emerging countries are growing much faster than uh, industrialized countries. And also the window would be defined by the fact that all the countries should be somewhere between one ton or two tons of CO2 per, per inhabitant per year. Now, the real stakes of the COP meeting in Paris will be precisely that. How do we manage to make all the countries converge to towards lower or very low per capita emission levels, we have reasons to be optimistic on the fact that the main players are doing something. They're moving towards uh, less carbon uh, in their energy consumption. France, China is about to change its energy supply system. 
But one of the main stakes for the French summit in Paris will be, is this going to happen fast enough so that we avoid accumulating too much greenhouse effect gases between now and 2050? This is the main question. The transition is on its way, it's in progress, but is it going to be fast enough? That is what we don't know. In the coming years, we will have to make huge efforts to make sure that the transition happens.